Welcome to Through the Wire. Through the Wire. We are two days away from the end of the NBA regular season. Can we get a round of applause for everybody? We got this far. These last two weeks have been dreadful. Everybody's saying these games matter. Then I watched the Dallas Mavericks play Luka for 11 minutes. These games don't matter. But it's almost <laughs> over. Almost. Almost over. We can finally get to the games that matter the most and see who's going to raise that Larry O'Brien. Be sure to leave a like. Subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. If you're listening to the audio platforms, leave us five stars. Then come over to YouTube, like this video, and subscribe to the channel as well. Today. Before we get to it. Okay. I got this note. Mm. It says TTW slash. The boys are back in town. <laughs> then he put town. Now, nah. look, look, look. I was streaming yes the other day and the person who sent that told me like, Oh, I sent that, he gonna bring it to you. I'm like, why would you ruin the surprise? Oh, don't ruin right. it for me then. I don't know <laughs> what's going on. I put it on Twitter, one knows surpri- I ain't even see it. So I mean, none of us seen it. It says sorry I don't have fancy cards for y'all. Wanted to get these to y'all ASAP. Enjoy the cards and keep up the good work. Neuron. Did they enjoy have a basketball for an O? No. This uh disappointing Neuron. So, Mm-mm. shout out to Naran, man. Shout out to Naran. Much love. TTW Founders Collection. Best players of 2023, Pierre Andreessen, the center field card. Oh, it's a, the baseball card. Yes, sir. Ooh. TTW Founders Collection. Best players of 2023, the White Sox shortstop, Kenny Beecham. Hey. Okay. It's a man take, that count his goddamn days. Spot. TTW Founders Collection. They compare him to Yordan Alvarez, Derek Miller in right field. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot not imagine Derek trying to shag a ball in right field. TTW <laughs> found his collection best players of 2023 are catcher, Mike <laughs> Hurd. They put your ass behind the play game. I'm supposed to be DH or something. <laughs> so he sent us eight cards. He said, um, you know, one for us to take home and do whatever we want to do. And these other four we can keep in the studio or whatever. Okay. Um, oh, he's so yeah. dope as hell. They really are. Thank Fire, Neuron. Thank you, Neuron. Does, he, so does he have your height you. right on the back? 5'10", so he's got the good day height. Okay. Say, he got me a good day height at 5'8". I'm going to cherish this. You got your height right? 6'3". I'm going to 6'3", too. Bat left, throws right. Damn, how you know I bat left? We did a, we did, we did a couple times. baseball oh, okay. videos. You said yeah. you, forgot it, you forgot how to bat right. Maybe more to come. Oh, look at you. You remember? Yeah, this is dope. No, I'm going to cherish I'm going to put this with my collection. This is No, nah, matter of fact, I'm going to keep this on my Send desk. it to PSA. Get it graded. Facts. That would be crazy in the grade, in the slab. Uh, shout out to Naran. Shout out to Naran. Um, so since we are in the last days of the NBA season, next time we talk to each other, it will be the day of the play-in. Our schedule kind of works out perfectly that we can do playoff predictions. We did that on there. purpose uh, five years ago. Five years ago. We knew exactly. Podcast. Right before the play-in started, we knew that play-in was coming. Happy birthday to J.J. Brown, by the way. J.J. Brown. It's on happy Easter, JJ. we're going to give him a happy birthday today. Award show. Boom. Uh, I don't think there's anything in my mind that can be swayed over the next two days of the NBA season. No. So it's all in stone, baby. We don't we don't have official votes. Let me do this spiel out of the way. We do not have official votes. We are not predicting who's going to win. But we said if we did have votes, Mike is voting this for MVP. I'm voting this and so on and so forth. And there's a lot of different candidates for a lot of different things. So if you don't disagree with our takes, that's completely okay. Uh, put your ballot on Twitter. Somebody got to get snubbed. Bro, it's it's some snubs out there. For sure. It's some snubs out there. For I sure. mean, I'm looking at all defensive and all NBA like, God damn. The day everybody in the basketball world got the same for everything is the day I'll be done doing this. <laughs> Not done podcasting, but I won't really care any, uh, enough to make my own ballot or whatever. The day we come in here, we got the same first team, second team, third team, defensive team, rookie of the year, coach of the year, six man, all of that. I'm done. Because what's the point of us doing it then? Yeah. We could just make this episode of... That would be a league of no parody. Yeah, it would just be That's like, <laughs> what are we doing? I think for the last couple years, we've always had the same MVP. Mm-hmm. I think the last time we've disagreed on MVP was the Russell Westbrook triple-double year. Yeah. I think majority of y'all had Russell Westbrook. I had Russell I had, Russ. I had James Harden that season. Um, retroactively, Russell Westbrook was the right pick. But Luckily, moment, they both got their MVPs. They eventually just, got it, right? Yeah. Um, this year... I, if we have the same pick across the board, then something is wrong. Because out of the three candidates, they all have very good arguments, very good cases. Um, and I wouldn't be mad. Yeah. Like, in today's episode, the way I'm thinking about it is, if we have something different, I'm not going to, this is the way it should be by nature, try to bash your candidate because you have him there. But I'm, if we have a debate, I'm not going to be like, you're wrong because of this. I'm going to say, this is why bro, I got this. I was doing my shit yesterday, and I'm like, bro, you can almost damn near flip a coin. 
and I think like you almost you could argue and you wouldn't be really wrong for them there any either one or yeah, they, uh, either the three. For a lot of these awards, even an all NBA team, all defensive team, all rookie team, only thing I have is a case for my player. Yeah. I don't really have a case to go against, against a player. Yeah. yeah. I can only just type talk up my guy. And if you talk up your guy better, then man, you have congrats. <laughs> I think a few of these I can be convinced the other way though. You know, well, like my my heart ain't in some of these awards. Yeah. Where it is like a flip of a coin. So if you gave if one of y'all disagreed and gave a really good argument, I I might flip on some of them. My heart ain't in any of these awards. My heart <laughs> is like defensive team a little bit. Okay. That's the that, defensive team is real fun for me. Yeah, me too. Um I, I hope that that's positionless next year. Yeah. Because there are a lot of better. wings. A I lot do, of definitely been better. I do, but I don't because I think the guards need appreciation and I think the guards will kind of get pushed out. Because there's not a lot of statistical data that supports defensive guard. Like, you got the blocks, mm-hmm. centers and stuff, wings, they're going to get steals. Guards can get steals, too. But that ain't true definition. I, I can lead the league in steals. I don't mean I'm guarding people. Alan Iverson did it seven times, it felt um, like. And, I mean, you got defensive metrics and any, everything like that, but people don't pay attention to it. Like, who, you can't tell. How many is, uh, how good does Drew Holiday avoid screens? Like that ain't on the top. You don't really give a fuck. Yeah, I test say very good, but yeah, yeah, you just can't. You, but you would probably know it. rim protection stats yep. and rim deterrence and shit like that. There's not a lot for guards to look appealing, which is fine. They yeah. don't need. A, a, I think the best thing this, the guards got is like deflections. And there's but a, that's a wing dominated thing to me. There's a there's a king <laughs> that is a guard though, and he made my all defensive team, and it makes me happy. Um, let's get the awards out of the way that we know there's not much of a conversation for. Rookie oh, can, we, can we hand out <laughs> the Mills Man of the Week? Oh, I'm sorry. Absolutely. I'm sorry. Who's the Mills Man of the Year? Ooh, damn. Oh, I was going to wait till the end of the year. No, I mean, you wasn't. You ain't had one. Because it's still going to keep going. Like, this doesn't end. Oh, you mean like playoff uh, two? Yeah. Oh, I thought gonna... it's not a regular season award. It's a full season award. Yeah, it's a full season award. Okay. So, like, we're not done with it. First award, full if season. If it was a regular season, who would you give it to off top here? A regular season award would go to... It don't have to be the MVP. As you no, know. no, no. I yeah. know. We know who the answer is. It's not going to be Damian Lillard. I want it to be, but I think I might swing. <laughs> I, I might actually, your awards, Mills Man. <laughs> I might go with either Claxton or Jaron Jackson Jr. Okay, I don't hate it. I don't hate it. That's pretty good. Claxton yeah. is a good. one. That's a very good one. But uh, that's Mills Man's of the week is Jaron Jackson Jr. Man, both Jaron Jackson Jr. has that a the crazy forty week. point one did it for forty you. point game. Yeah. Yep. Yesterday, yet another very big one. J- Jaron is. I made a tweet yesterday that his offensive leap has. It's been crazy. It's been crazy and under talked about. Yeah. When when John Moran got suspended to going through all that, Jaron was just taking over, putting up thirties pretty regularly. Um, he's been able to do the thing that we knew he had the potential to do, which is like shoot the ball. He's doing that okay, but he's putting the ball on the ground. He's using mm-hmm. post moves and stuff. I'm like, damn. And uh, and I knew that. And then I was looking at the numbers and stuff. And spo- spoiler, all NBA Jaron, bro. <laughs> <laughs> all NBA Jaron. That's all I'm saying. He he was one of the last people I was really looking at, and considering if he's, I don't, I'm not gonna say what my list is, but yeah, he makes it he makes it hard. Shout out to him, uh, rookie of the year, Paulo Banquero. Rookie of the year was Paulo Banquero yep. for me. I like that it wasn't like a. I mean, it, it felt like it was over in the first month, but then Jalen Williams obviously had a huge uh, spark to yes. the second half of the season and helped the OKC Thunder now secure. A play-in spot. Shout out to the Thunder for having a great season. Two-year, two-year rebuild, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, and and here they are in the play. I mean, they're still rebuilding, but you and get they what did I'm this saying. without a starting center. Yep, remember that. Hey, don't <laughs> don't disrespect Jalen Williams though. Uh, he or cool. Jeremiah Robinson. Did he make your all rookie team? No, he didn't. Okay, that's yeah. <laughs> um, but no, yeah. Uh, J Dub made it fun. Um, but ultimately, it still is Paolo Mancaro. I know a lot of people are looking at the splits, the shooting splits, how. J Dub has been ultraly um, efficient. Holy shit! The three, point shooting, has, well, the three point shooting was surprising for me, at least from J Dub. But he he was a lot better than I thought he would be. Yeah, at especially after a slow with, start. Yeah, you yeah. know. Um, but Paolo ended up shooting like forty two percent, but twenty eight percent. But he's the number one option on a bad team. So like those are the type of numbers that you see a lot of eventual great players end up having yes, in their rookie yeah. season. Kevin Durant, str- 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 I'm putting in a quote, Jason Mark, struggle from the field um, his rookie season. And we can go on on a great list. And I think that Palom Beccaro is next on that great list of eventual NBA stars that struggled from the field. His rookie season to me is looking like I'm expecting big jump second or third year. It's going to yeah. be fast. It'll mm-hmm. be fast. He's going to be one of those guys that I think could be an all-star year three. But I'm expecting that big jump from him. 
into like stardom. Certain yeah. certain players they have a nice rookie year, they may take a step back, sophomore slump. But then you have certain guys that take that that stay kind of consistent, and then you got guys that take big monster leaps immediately. And mm-hmm. I think he can be that guy that is like, oh shit. I just think I, I love that he got drafted to like the perfect team. I think this team is perfectly built for him to go in there and thrive. He doesn't have to do too much. He literally just has to focus on being Paulo. Mark Hill's handling the ball, facilitating, doing all that. You got Franz Wagner on the wing who's taking pressure off of him. It's like this team is built to be looking really good in the next few years. And it's um, going to be very fun to watch. Did I see his Knuckleheads interview? Mm-mm. No. It just dropped yesterday. I saw clips of it um, where he was talking about draft night because you remember the odds headed Jabari Smith Jr. is going number one. Paolo had basically accepted the fact that he was going number three. And then he said he was in the, the big green room with all the other players and that he saw on ESPN that the odds had shifted for him being number one. And he said, I wasn't nervous until this point. You know, my whole life I've just just been a dude that's never nervous about anything. Um, and then he saw that he could potentially go number one, and he says the first time I cried tears of joy after he was drafted and stuff. So it's a cool story. He cool didn't interview. know he was getting drafted there no. until 30 seconds before. Which is very, very rare, especially right. for the first overall pick. Which but, is sad. The like man. the moment the lottery happens this year, we Victor know. Wembanyama knows he's going to that he city. He might as well. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, the Magic, y'all are fucking foolish that it took y'all that long. They were literally pump faking us, talking about they were taking Jabari Smith Jr. I, whole I think time. that they were betting on it, so they got the odds in the other favor, bet while the odds were high, mm. and they cashed out, man. Easy money. That's why you got to do it. We're going to have rumors that Brandon Miller scoring number one this season, even though number we two. know. Number two. No, we're going to have rumors that he's going number one <laughs> to shift the odds. And even though we know the team that's drafted one. Them odds getting... is not going to be shifted. <laughs> <laughs> no, they no, no, ain't falling for that yeah, shit. Yeah, nah. <laughs> um, they going to call that bluff quick. Did y'all have y'all third rookie? Are we talking about the third rookies? Absolutely. I had Walker Kessler. Uh, Walker Kessler's had a great season. Mm. Um, and he's showing that the defensive versatility that he's shown in college. Mm. He translated to the league. Offensively, he's still a little raw. He's showing flashes, though, but it's there. He's going to be very good. I Never like in a million years after seeing him do the same thing in college that I think it would translate this easy, this smoothly, and this fast. Mm-hmm. Um, if you would have told me to predict his career, I'd have probably this this season would have probably been his prime year for me. Mm-hmm. Oh, and the yeah. fact that it's wow. this is rookie year means that the sky is ultimately the limit for him. Uh, third guy for me would be uh, Keegan Murray. Keegan Murray was to me, a very instrumental piece to what the Kings are doing and their offense flourishing the way that it has. Um, I'm a big believer that having the Sabonis fold opens up a lot of doors for their offense. Obviously, De'Aaron Fox is that guy, but I think Keegan Murray is an underrated part of that with his three-point shooting, and I think he's missed the consistency. He's he's not – you don't have sex appeal. Um, but compare him to this. Keegan Murray is not the IG model. But you don't leave your wife for the IG model because your wife cooks you dinner, mm-hmm. folds the laundry, he, keeps he's the house the, in order. He's the um, high school sweetheart. Yes. And after you make <laughs> it, you just stay with because yep. the love mm-hmm. was real before and the he money. he broke the record. I think most threes. threes for a rookie. Yep. yep. Who did he beat? Donovan Mitchell. Donovan Mitchell. Wow. And I think he just shot nearly 40% on it. So that's a very good third no, pick. I, mean, I also agree with Derek, though. Um, I got Kessler as my third. Uh, I think the defense – um was overwhelmingly great for what they needed him to be. Um, and then once they put him in that starting lineup, uh, you compare his advanced statistics to the guy that he was a part of the trade for, he looked better. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I, my, That's your man's, though. That's my man's, but I got to keep it a buck. My third guy was Walker Kessler, too. And the way he, he defends and protects the rim, you can see it being like a long-term thing. He doesn't – it's not like he jumps out the gym or anything. He, he kind of, like, does a lot of good positioning. And he just uses his length. And he's got a real nice size to him, too. It's not like a skinny frame or anything. He's he's well built. So mm. I like his hell, hell of a screen setter, too. Yeah. Hell of a screen setter. He's well put together. He can be like an action figure. <laughs> <laughs> he was built like an action figure. He'd be dominating. That'd be crazy. <laughs> you love them action <laughs> figures, <laughs> don't you? <laughs> Man, I will never, for as long as I live, forget that moment, Derek. He said, it, "Damn!" It, it took us all. It took me so by surprise. Did we t- tell a story on the show? Yeah. Before? It took me so we told by surprise. When we came back. <laughs> you thought he saw a fat ass? Yes. He said, and, "Damn!" And it was a it was a buff dude trying to get you to take a picture with a with fucking him. necktie on and no shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know he had a necktie. No, not a necktie. He had a uh, a bow bow tie. Bow tie, bow tie yeah. with and no d- shirt. Derek looked at me, at that man and said, "Damn." Damn. <laughs> yeah, you wasn't there yet. Yeah. Da- this we was in Vegas. We, we was in on Vegas. our way to get them daiquiris. That, Damn. That was like, man, I wish the camera was there. Yeah. 
<laughs> it was a pause. Damn. Nigga built like an action figure. <laughs> <laughs> is that your dream body? Is that like what what about because he was well built built, obviously, but not enough for me to look at him and scream, damn. Right. <laughs> He was built like an action figure. <laughs> when I saw him, all I thought about was like the wrestling action figures. I was like, that's the physique that they would have. You gonna climb him like a tree? No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy. That's how his damn was. Shit. It really was, bro. Because, <laughs> you know, Vegas got both. Yeah, they got half the naked women. men and they got half naked women it was on the street. Literally, women so. next. To, it was two dudes and two girls. You could have said like, "Oh, she she pretty" or something, but it was nope. Got to keep it a buck. He built like an action figure. <laughs> <laughs> Derek is brutally honest. He respect That's the honesty. What, yeah, respect I, the honesty. I love D-Mills for that. All right, what award are we had? Coach the of the year. year, Mike yeah. Brown, number Mike one, Brown. unanimous at least for Dang. me. It was Mike okay, Brown. Okay, okay. Unanimous. Kind of, <laughs> the, the, the Kings these last, oh, especially last game, they be kind of like. Just whatever, getting ready for the postseason. But anytime you can have the Kings basically almost win 50 games in a season, you you deserve it. Yeah, yeah they definitely is like the biggest surprise of the season. So when you look at that body of work, when you go from a team that looks like they're supposed to be fighting for a play-in spot and they skip that step of progression mm-hmm. and they go straight to looking like a team that's in the third seat, potentially can go on second-round conference finals, depending on how shit go, that's a hell I mean, of a season. Thank think. He has De'Aaron Fox. Would you tell me if I'm wrong? De'Aaron Fox having the best season of his career. Mm-hmm. Sabonis is having a great season. Kevin Herter probably is. You yep. say. Yep. Um, King of Murray is a rookie. He's been outstanding. Uh, you have Malik, Malik, Malik Monk. Monk. I would say Trey, Trey Lyles is having the best year. Of yeah. You career. have like six, seven players and maybe plus that are having the best. Terrence Davis. The, yeah, the There's best. A season lot of, of those guys. Um, and I like that he took like pieces from every other stop. Some of the Warrior sets are now in Sacramento because they have some personnel. They're not similar, but they have the shooting mm-hmm. around uh, a, a ball-dominant guy, like how Draymond kind of ran things, and now it's just a bonus. I, I love mm-hmm. all of that shit. Um, and I think it w- you could have saw it happening in the beginning of the season when he was practicing with them and running the sprints with them and screaming through it. I like, like you could tell that those, those players really loved him from the jump. Um, and they're fighting for him. I mean, yeah. even even now where they don't really have a lot to play for, they still out there trying to get as many wins as possible, which we got to respect. So shout out to Coach Mike Brown. No better clip sums up him than the Terrence Davis shit, where he tells Terrence Davis, like, no, nah, you got to get right here. And then the very next play, Terrence Davis gets the charge. Yep. Beautiful, beautiful coach. Great coach. Great shout coach. Out to, Is that the uh, play where he called timeout and then he went on the yeah. court and physically? Yeah, mm-hmm. that's. That's like that just shows you how a good coach can change a whole team. Because a good coach changed your life, gave yeah. you suits and t- walked you back to his car. Had me had the best sports sports experience of my career. So I love I love Coach <laughs> Nod for real. I love the story you told he because gave you suits. Yeah, because he was I like that. he gave he me all the dinner. He, he told me come gear. here, come to my car. And there he's like, I followed him to his car. Followed Is that illegal? <laughs> what for him to be giving you that shit? I don't if know. If Derek was a top recruit, probably they would probably <laughs> look into it. Like, oh, you accept. I still have all the it's... Nike football gear he gave me, like all the pads, extra pads and stuff he would give me. Why do you have that? You never know when the Bulls, I mean, no, the Bears give, don't call. No, give that, <laughs> I was going to say, like, give that to a kid. You outside give of the practice? Give it to a kid. I mean, is it super worn? No. Yeah, you just go to Hinsdale South and try to find He's going to get arrested. <laughs> <laughs> True, he might. <laughs> Grown ass man carrying around football equipment. What are you talking about? I went to get something to eat yesterday. <laughs> and I saw some kids that played baseball. The little dude was like, nice hat. It was a white size hat. And I'm like, you know, what position y'all playing shit? I like that Terrence does his coaching because it, se- it seems fun. Yeah, it does. He, yeah. he really enjoys it. <laughs> yeah. And one day I would love to coach something for a game. Is that a game? Yeah. Just a game. And then you'll see if it lasts longer. Being a coach is stressful. All right, who's number two on y'all coach of the year? Joe Mazzula. Joe Mazzula. He's number two for me. Oh, no, actually, Jock Vaughn. I had Mike Budenholz. Jock Vaughn did a good job. I had Coach Bud as well, Mike. You know, I had Coach Bud, but then I took him off. The reason I had Coach Bud is... Because he just changed that love philosophy. No Chris Middleton for Boca this season. Even when he has played, he hasn't looked great. And I just like how they revolutionized their defense where they were a team for the past half a decade where they just allow you to shoot as many threes as you want to and we're going to live with protecting the paint. And this season, they took away that and took away the paint. And it's like... How the fuck do you score in them now? Mm-hmm. Um, and I think a lot of that is schematics that um, Coach B- Budenholzer put into play. And obviously, they're the best team in ball right now. I just want to share some light. On, I just wanted to share some light on Jock Vaughn because the Nets season been up and down. He took somebody else's spot. The KD trade, Kyrie trade. They didn't fall off super significant. A lot of people thought that they could possibly be out of the picture. Like they spot was up for grabs when we were talking <laughs> here. Like man, the Heat might go get that. The Hawks, blah blah blah. The Raptors, but nah, they stay they stay strong. I also got to show some 
some love to Coach Steve, you know, yep. New York Knicks. We back just like that. You I had JB Bickerstaff at number three. Okay. I, I, don't, I don't mind. I had Mr. Malone. And I had uh, Coach Mark Dayton on. Day- From the Thunder. Day- Day- That's a really good pick. That's a good one. Yeah, I mean, projected to win 26 games and go and be a play-in team and one of the better defensive teams in basketball at the, a- the average age that's lowest in all of ball. The the youngest team ever constructed in the NBA. Play-in team? Yeah, I think you'd have deserved some votes, but not on Mike Brown level. So we just we give you that honor- <laughs> we give you that honorable mention. Give you that honorable mention. Uh, what's the clutch player of the year award? <laughs> okay. These are the ones that we know who number one is. Fox. Shout out to Swiper. Unanimous? Unanimous clutch player? Not even close. Okay. Oh, yeah. Kyrie make it look close. I'll Does he? Kyrie's he at my two. top three. Kyrie's at two. Okay. That's a, yeah. that's a good pick. I mean, I think he was Dude. second as far as fourth quarter scoring goes in the league behind De'Aaron Fox. Um, my number two was Joel Embiid. Joel Embiid hit six game Man, winner. So nice. Six game winner slash game tying or going ahead shots late in the fourth quarter of the season. Um, one game specifically when they were going against the Portland Trail Blazers in March, where they were down by 15 points. Oh, why well, you have to bring this up? I know he brought, fought them all the way back and then hit the game with one <laughs> second to go. And uh, he, yeah, he's been he's been clutch as hell, and pl- that's not even including like clutch blocks like he did on the game last week and things like that. So I got him at number two. Y'all ain't got no love for Jalen Brunson. He he did not make my top Julius three. Julius Randle, no love for the Knicks. That's cool. Not in this one. Yeah, they, 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 they got, got some, some stuff coming. Yeah, they got some love in other words. Uh, my third in this one uh, is Jimmy Butler. Jimmy Butler was my third as well. Jimmy Butler was extremely clutch this season. Kind of underrated season when you think about it. Averaging like 22-ish points per game. Especially at the beginning. Um, he had some, like, fat. Remember them steals? What game was that we I was mean, all watching? He stuck. I, I had him at Fantasy, and it was... Oh, I know exactly what game you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he got a couple steals down the stretch. And then he I think he hit the ga- eventual game winner? Or did he hit a game tying shot to go to overtime or something yeah, like that? Yeah. Uh, yeah, Jimmy Butler's been dope. And if he had a better supporting cast, I think we talk about him a little bit more. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, playing. Good luck. I would take Jimmy for my third. Oh, you didn't have a third? No, I didn't. Okay. I didn't do this award, but Jimmy Butler has been that man. I didn't do this award either. Cliffs. <laughs> <laughs> you but, remember he had the episode with people being unprepared? <laughs> uh, I mean, it's a new award. It's the first year of the award. It's understandable. It's an award I kind of don't give a fuck about. <laughs> <laughs> uh, MIP? Or was that a... MIP? MIP, because I think this one... I got Lowry. I have Lowry marking and winning and most improved oh. player. Okay. What you thought was gonna be Shade? I thought some people would put Shade number Man, one. Cut it. We Lower don't do, we don't do dumb shit up here. But Shade is number two for me. This I got Jalen Brunson at number two. Jalen Brunson's my number three. I love that. I love that. You know how yeah, we I, I couldn't be mad at the Shade pick so because it's just he so for him to be all NBA damn near oh, I have him as first team. I'm oh, you're just spoiling your to, list already. Hey, I don't think it's that <laughs> surprising for a person like him. He's had a cr- incredible year and for the OKC to be in the playoffs, he, he's well deserving of that. Yeah, I respect it. I respect it. Um, if Shea did win, I would be kind of bummed out for Lowry marketing. But yeah. it seems like that's the NBA mode right now. Go mm-hmm. from really good to great, which I don't hate. Same I as, hate as, it. It's Ja. Right, exactly. It. But it I like the, the same going from ja. almost, almost nothing to all-star. Yes. That's yeah. really cool. Yes. The story with Lowry marketing is just like, and I know it's supposed to be like off the previous year or whatever, but from him to go to an all-star starter is... It's still mind blowing to this day. Yep. Yeah, he was a guy who literally was bouncing around a little bit. Bulls, Cavs, then he found his home in Utah and then he blossomed. That's literally like a most improved type of blossom you will ever see. And to see it go to Shea, well, who he kind of can see the evolution of what he was going to become. You didn't see Laurie becoming this. Yeah. Yeah, Shea averaged 24 last year and jumped up to 30 plus points. Um, nobody's going to argue that he hasn't improved yeah. a ton. Seven points. Oh, seven for sure. Plus points. Or- it's still pretty impressive. Pretty damn impressive. Um, so, again, I wouldn't be terribly mad if Shea walked away with it, but I will feel like, mm-hmm. you know, there are some candidates that are kind going of back to the normal trophy? Are um, they going back to the normal trophy? Yeah, I think the the goal, I mean, the ball thing was just for the 75th year. I hope so. I hope they do, too. Because Oh, you know what? They dropped the new pictures of the trophies. That's when we found out Clutch Player of the Year and all of that. They're, like, in, yes. in like, a crystallized oh, okay. thing. Um, and some of them look cool. All right, I'm not some of them don't. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Uh, six man, six man of the year. This was a tough one. Y'all this is know. probably the best. Y'all already know who I got, man. I know who you got. Mm-hmm. Y'all already I probably know have who the I same got. person. Oh, manual quickly. Come on, I have Bobby P. Oh, that's a good one. I have Malcolm Brogdon. That's a good one. Malcolm Brogdon was my second one. So I have we Brogdon got all that too. Yeah, we got all three of the top three yeah. candidates. Yeah, those are my top three, just different <laughs> orders. Uh, my my 
argument, if you want to say that, for um, Malcolm Brogdon. So he's been so very consistent. We knew he was a like a 50-40-90 mm-hmm. dude when he was in Milwaukee, went on to Indi- Indiana to try to be more, realized that maybe that's a little bit tougher, and then they convinced him to buy in to come off the bench, and he's been ultra consistent. He's been closing out games. The defense has been really, really good. Um, and overall, just looking at the counting stats of the candidates, if we just look at it as simple as that, um, his counting stats off the bench look better than everybody's across mm-hmm. the board. Um, and again, he's a really important part to a really good team. I got Emmanuel quickly. I think Emmanuel quickly is embodied what a six man is when you talk about this award. Malcolm Brogdon is a little tied up, a little boring with it. Emmanuel quickly is that energy, that spark that you want off the bench. Um, fourth games with 30 plus. Uh, 19 games with five or more assists, 15 assists A lot of those game, are starting, though. Does that matter to you? Game. No, because he's still off the bench, but it just shows you how how important he is. And I still think when a six-man guy gets put into a starting role and he still thrives, I still think it should count. I th- yeah, I, I think I you, agree with that. Yeah, if you replace the starting point guard and you're like the backup guard and you still come in and you really hold it down, that should also count towards your ability to get the award. Because yeah. some, some guys you bring on it's the still bench a, and you insert them in there, they can fall off. You'd be like, oh. To me, mm-hmm. it's still the same mindset. You, you're the next man up. You're the yeah. first person yeah. off the bench to replace somebody. So it's all one. And like we talked about um, on Pick a Side when I was on there, it's about the vibes. And he bring the vibes and he sparks that do. game. He definitely, definitely brings the energy. Yeah. Yeah. Energy, defense, he got all that. And you know, I didn't he, expect him to be that good of a defender. That's when he size. edged out Brogdon defensively this year. This year. I took I, respect I, it. I took Bobby Portis as mine. I think he's just been like one of those dudes that's been literally consistent the whole year and provides the Bucks like what they need off the bench. He's been averaging a double double off of double, it. Yeah. And then I think his offense is very just underrated. Like he's mm-hmm. pretty well at shooting the three ball. And honestly, he takes he takes advantage of mismatches too. And I think he just adds that like extra X factor to the Bucks. Yeah, he, he wants he, the war too. Really he does. Bad. He does. He told Giannis, to hey, I'm gonna bring something to the table that y'all don't have. You know he has a podcast? Mm-mm. Is it, what's the name of it? Everybody got one these yeah. days. I think it's called uh, Keep It a Buck. No way. I think it is. How? What do you mean, how? There's a, so there's two podcasts called Keep It a Buck. You no, think, no, no, no. The other podcast is Let's Keep It a Buck. Let's Keep It a Buck. Oh. And I don't think that Bobby Porter's really cares. Not, yeah, really no. care. <laughs> <laughs> it's like if somebody <laughs> had a Through the Wire podcast, it's nothing we could do. We don't own the name Through the Wire, you know? Shout out to yeah. Damo. Yeah. Uh, next award. What is it? Uh, DPOY? Was DPOY. Uh, Rip the band-aid off, Derek. Who's your d- defense player of the year? Darren Jackson Jr. Kanye is going to start a podcast called Through the Wire, by the way. He's not, <laughs> he not going to care that we exist. No. He, That's kind of how it is when you're not It's going to be more alt-right named. What's his black skinhead? That's his, that's his podcast. You're right. <laughs> you're right. What's the next one? Uh, DPOY. Mm-hmm. I went with Darren Jackson Jr. The rim deterrence that he has provided this season. That boy been in his b ball index bag. <laughs> it's in what percentile? That boy been in that. Uh, 99. Is it really? Sorry. I didn't even look. I'm guessing. I did not look uh, at Most that. of his rim protecting uh, percentiles is 99. Like the 99 percentile. Yeah. 90, yeah. yeah I would just, when you watch him, you could just tell that his impact when he's in, on, in the paint is ridiculous. And he's playing center a lot now with Steven Adams being out. And he's holding it down. So... For yeah, me, Jaron Jackson is my DPOI. I got Jaron Jackson as well. I don't really care about the, the the fouls and the minutes and all of this shit that people are trying to bring it in. The fact is, before him, they was a twentieth ranked defense. Um, when since he's came back, they've been a number one defense. And my, that you know, these games could make mm-hmm. this change or whatnot. But um, he's he's that important to them, and yeah. I think that that's to me big time. And he got some cool defenders around him, but nobody like what the Bucks got. You know, Brooke Lopez does have Drew. He does have a guy like Giannis. Giannis ain't been on his defensive shit like he usually does this particular year. I think part of that is because he has Brooke. Um, not saying that Giannis is a bad defender, but Giannis is normally in this conversation. I don't think any of y'all going to have him in his top three this year. No. no. Um, and I think, what, you got Jaron Jackson with Dylan Brooks, Dylan who's Brooks, a good defender, but he's, he's not Drew He's close Holiday. to all defensive for me because <clears throat> the guard positions are kind of lame. Um, is Dylan Brooks a guard? I looked I, at his uh, minutes played. It was like 80% at, at shooting guard. I have season. him as a guard. Yeah. I have him as a guard as well. Um, yeah, I, I thought pretty decently about it as far as like the minutes um, and stuff like that. Like the 
actual shot contest in the percentage. Brooke Lopez edged them out a little bit. But I still did go with Jaron because I think on a minute-by-minute, second-by-second basis, there's not a player in basketball that's more impactful on defense. And at the end of the day, I'm willing to sacrifice – I think it's 600 minutes, which is a shit ton of basketball. <laughs> but, uh, I'm willing to sacrifice those 600 minutes for the number one percentile player in Jaron Jackson Jr., so he's my one as well. Uh, I had Brooke Lopez for mine. He just had a, a – it's crazy how he's getting older and he just seems like he's getting better just in, in different types of areas on the floor. But his defense is, is was immaculate. And I think kind of last year, too, the Bucks' defense had fell off a little bit. Mm-hmm. And that's mostly because Brooke Lopez wasn't there. But – with him being back and playing so many games, he, they kind of turned that back around, and they're one of the top defenses in the league. So, And also, it was one game that I'm like, he he's my DPOY. It's the game where they played against the Nuggets, and I, the Nuggets ended up beating the Bucks. But the you first, say the Sixers. But the first half, Brooke Lopez had one-on-one coverage on Jokic, and he was doing a damn good job. And so it's just can like, he do that in seven he's games? got the block shots, and he could guard the one-on-one. We'll see what he could do in seven games. It had to be in the finals to see if he could do it against Jokic. I, I like the pick, Mike. I ain't gonna, I ain't mad at you. Um, yeah, I like it, too. I mean, Brooke Lopez, if he won it, it's not like, oh, we rioting type shit. Like, he is a really, really viable candidate. That might, too. I, yeah, and I think Brooke Lopez does a good job of being, like, a good P&R defender. Like, he's not a guy he's, that he's, you're going to put on an island. What P&R stands for? Pick and roll. Oh. <laughs> no, I, I, I think he's underrated too. Because I wonder, I had to ask you. He's obviously <laughs> not fast at all, but he uses his length so well. Yeah, he does. Yeah. My number three is Evan Mobley. I went with Draymond Green. And I, I, if I would have showed you like before the edit, I had Evan Mobley three, but I ended up ultimately going with Draymond at number three, which means that technically. Evan Mobley's going to be on my second team defensively, and I really wanted to put him number Draymond one. Draymond did not make my all defensive team. <laughs> That's tough, bro. Draymond did not, did not make it. What? Well, we almost done. Well, we, when we get there, we'll talk about it. Well, uh, what about you? Who's your third? Uh, I had. Oh, I. Who are we doing defense? Defense. Player? Player. I had Brooke Lopez, <laughs> uh, JJJ, and Evan Mobley. Evan Mobley. Okay. Shout out to Emo. Hey, second, so second year player to even be in the conversation. He's just so. It's ridiculous. Though. MVP. Not many people want oh, pack the last defense. award. Right. Is it the last award? Yeah, yeah. Yes, MVP it is. is the last award. The moment everybody's been waiting for because <laughs> the only thing people want to talk about anymore, the most valuable player of the season. Mike, I want you. Derek been starting off a lot of these but awards. He ready, too. He breathing. I know. Yeah, I see he licking his <laughs> lips for this one. I just, it's the thing. I usually always go first. But okay. No, you can do? go ahead. Do your thing. Oh. Mike don't look confident in his answer at that all. Might go, <laughs> let, Mike let Mike go. Let Mike go. Uh, my MVP was Joel Embiid. Honestly, it could have been the flip of a coin. I think everybody can make an argument for the top three, but ultimately I went with Joel Embiid. For him to lead the league in scoring at the center position, I think it's a hell of a thing just in itself. But he does this, he faces the same things that all these other guys go through. He goes through double teams every night. He goes through double teams every night and still to be able to lead the league in scoring. And the thing that kind of took over the edge to is not the same level of playmaking as, as, as a Jokic or nothing like that, but I think it's going to be crucial for him. And what added to his game is just his ability to read through those double teams and make those plays. I've seen him have 50 in a game, and the game-winning play he makes is because they're double-teaming him, and he's he pa- he finds a cutting P.J. Tucker or something like that. And I think that's the type of edge that, that he gives to that team, that not only is he just so dominant scoring, but he's willing to give up the ball and willing to do the stuff that wins games, like on also the defensive side. I think he was – he's not, you know, in that really – I guess he, he kind of is in that range, but he's not – a top candidate for DPOY, but I think he could have been one of those names you talk about and you could bring him up. He just added so much to the floor for the Sixers this year. I think this is the year he gets it. Yeah, I mean, Joel Embiid is phenomenal. He's my D- he's not my DPOY. My, <laughs> my MVP as well. Uh, what he does offensively is just ridiculous when he does the man that double team. Like, he literally sometimes just scores through it. Like, he doesn't even care. That game where he just had 50 the other night against the Celtics, Oh, my God. The amount of shots that he was making over double teams in post phase, getting to the basket. We saw him do it against the Cavs. It seemed like there's certain games where Joel Embiid just goes to a whole nother level. And no matter who's guarding him, no matter how many people you throw at him, he's going to go and get that bucket regardless. And that, to me, just embodies an MVP. Like, when you could just go get it on your own. But he also does sprinkle in some assists. And we know the defense is still always going to be there. It may not be Brooke Lopez, Jaron Jackson level, but it's still there. Mm-hmm. So and his offensive load is was significantly five higher. times more yeah. than that. So <laughs> Joel Embiid is my MVP as well, man. Wow. Joel, Joel Embiid, he has it for me. Um, I'm a, I'm a guy that I look at everything. I know a lot of people, you know, 
look at a lot, a lot of things too. It's the MVP, but <laughs> I'm a feel guy. I think MVP has a feel, and Joel and B definitely checks out the feel for me. Just how consistent he's been, number one, um, and how dominant. That's the yeah. word I want to use specifically for him. And all three candidates is the dominance that they all have had mm-hmm. consistently throughout this year. Um, I know the other teams or the Bucks are higher and he's a three seed or whatever, all of that bullshit that people will try to bring up. But I think he's where the Sixers should be. I didn't think that the Sixers would be the number one team out east and anything like that. They're reaching their expectations. He's been carrying them when they was missing hard. And I think Maxie missed some time. He's carried them through that. Um, he is, what, 90 percentile and most of the rim protection shit. He is uh, You'll take that. 99 Thanks. percentile in isolation as a center. So – there's things that I love about Joel Embiid, and I'm happy that he's getting an award, and now I just want to see him do some shit in the playoffs to, to match the award. Him and Jokic, they both going to have this award. Now it's time for them to go crazy in these playoffs where it matters. And, um, yeah, but what I will say is this is truly a conversation with three people. All the time I see this conversation on social media or people talking about it, y'all sit there and y'all put that man – at number three or far away in three, as if he's not in this conversation. And that man is Giannis Antetokounmpo. So I feel like he's officially reached the LeBron tier where y'all are just taking him for granted or he's so dominant and so damn good that it's getting underappreciated at this point because the Bucks did not have a guy that has been um, their second best player for a lot of Giannis's, um peak. And they didn't miss a beat. Yep. Mm. You know Any what? other team miss their second guy or anything like that? There's a significant drop. You, they probably still doing anything, but I damn near think that they like we're gonna see what the playoffs do. But like, they good. They're yeah. fine. No, I, I was thinking how scary it is because you have Jokic and Embiid having such like well, like brilliant seasons, but Giannis is just casually doing. I feel like Giannis is not even like really going as hard as he can, possibly can. I feel like he's saving himself a little bit for these playoffs. But he just casually walk. He's casually putting up the same numbers as people that's having like historical careers. And when he and flips I, that switch, and I feel like this is some nasty. shit he could do next year. Yeah. You know, it seems like he's still one of those players as good as he did with MVPs. He still gets better each and every. Year. I had to say that just because I I cannot allow myself to fall into that mm-hmm. because I feel like when I was a little younger and I was just specifically a fan, it's like yeah, you seeing the same guy win it, and it's like I want to see somebody. I'm not falling. I'm not allowing myself to go down there. I'm going to appreciate a talent that's so good. I don't give a fuck if he got to win five in a row. He, if he's the best player and he's the most valuable, and we can see the second best player, third best player. Last year was Brook. Oh, they can miss so much and they can still be this high elevated team with the same expectations, and they meet the expectations. Then yeah, I, I have to acknowledge it. So this is a three man race for me, and it's not just Jokic and uh, Embiid. Yeah, I, I think that the way it usually works is if you win two in a row, a lot of times you're on the back burner for the last one. I mean, I guess technically it's not the case this year because Jokic is still in conversations. Um, I, I'm, I'm going to speak for all of us on this. We didn't take into consideration that Jokic already has two, right? No. Like, no. we took, put everything on an even playing field. Some people are using Well, yeah, that. yeah, yeah. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, it was kind of in my mind. It, it, was. wasn't, it wasn't a deciding factor, but it was on my mind. Okay. Um, it, it wasn't on my mind too much, but we unanimously have Joel Embiid as our MVP, Yeah, which is surprising to me because I, I think it has fluctuated, right? Early in the season, it felt like it was like Steph Curry Tatum in the first couple months, and then Jokic took it. Like, it was it was his to lose, and then we had that game with them two going against each other, and I won't act like it was the determinative factor in that moment, but it made a, a huge Just mark case. on a lot of people's minds, and minds included. And then Joel Embiid went overdrive while it felt like Nikola Jokic and his team fell back a little bit. Because they annoyed him with the conversations For that sure. they had around his name. Yep. His coach and, and, basically and He couldn't go it. to the podium without being asked by MVP. Same thing right. with Mike Malone and all of them. So I understand it from their perspective. But the, these are the major things that made Joel Embiid my MVP. Usually, um, Nikola Jokic is this advanced statistic darling. Every advance that the defensive defense is fan stats. The offensive fan stats are number one in basketball. And they still are. But the gap between him and Joel Embiid now is so minuscule that it's not even like a huge talking point anymore. So the stats are nearly even. Jokic get that little bump. The defense, obviously, the gap between those two players defensively is the Grand Canyon. Like, it's one of the biggest gaps that can be in basketball, right? Again, Joel Embiid, what you say, like 90th percentile in a lot of things. He's not yeah. the best in the world, but he's definitely in the top tier when it comes to that position. And we talk about the center position. It's one of, if not the most important defensive position in basketball. And in this case, Joel Embiid hasn't beat there. 
also moments matter a lot to me. Um, That's last that year, and the, the previous years, uh, Nicole Jokic said game winners, game winners. He had like three game winning blocks. All of these things matter. Moments for Joel and beat this season are insane. We have the game that I mentioned earlier against the Portland Trail Blazers where he fought them all the way back. We have, he had the 10th best regular season performance in all of basketball this year. One game against the Utah Jazz, but it happened earlier in the season, and that's why we ain't talking about it, right? He had 57, 12, 7, and some blocks and steals. It was the 10th greatest, according to game score, the 10th greatest individual performance in the history of ball. And we're talking about MJs. We're talking about all of these. He did that. He also had another one on this list that was 57th, and that was the game a couple nights ago against the uh, the Boston Celtics. Yeah. We had 52 on great, crazy great splits. This guy has had some of the greatest individual performances in basketball. The defense has been good. The team has been good. They're the three seed, and it's not like they're three seed between 72 Warriors and the 52 win, whatever. Like, it's five games between him and the number one seed at um, Giannis Dedekumpo, Milwaukee Bucks. And it felt like this was the most available year of Joel Embiid's career. And, and one of the biggest knocks on him, um, if you want to call it that, is his lack of health, which has been warranted, right? He's been a dude that will play 40-something games in slow management, or it wasn't even called that back then, but, like, he won't play back-to-backs. And this year, and, and he made it a point, I'm going to be as healthy as – even, like, now, they're still playing basketball games. He don't really need to no more. We know what seeds y'all are. Yeah. But he wants to continue to add to this resume. And the only thing that he would be missing for it to be, like, a, I think close to unanimous is that game in Denver. If he plays yeah. that game in Denver and he has another really, really good performance, I think that the conversation is strictly Joel Embiid. But obviously, Nikola Jokic has a very great case. Yeah. Um, obviously, Giannis Antetokounmpo has a very good case as being the best player in the league. Literally, is the, like Giannis's mm-hmm. case can be, I am the best in basketball. Same case that LeBron has had over the large, large portion of his career, but LeBron is going to finish in second and third a lot too. Um, but ultimately. I think, I think Joel Embiid is a dude, man. I think this is the Joel Embiid year. And again, it's not because it's not here, motherfucker. Like, mm-hmm. fight, take it. Yeah. You've been crying. That's not how I feel this year. Mm-hmm. For me, is it's five percent of that is okay. just five percent. I ain't think it too much like of it. He's but been I'm like, there for so long that when he facts. finally gets it, then it's kind of gonna feel like that. But I, I don't see. I feel like with KB though, it feel like it's completely warranted that he's no, he's it. earned it. But a part mm-hmm. of it also is because this guy has been in the conversation, so it's like for sure though, it's in it's in our mind a little bit. We just mm-hmm. don't have the attitude where it's like here, I don't, we don't want, right. we want to give it to him. I'm happy that he's getting it. Love the process. Love, 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 love the process. I'm a big, I was a ben, big Ben Simmons supporter. The process I always got love for Philly, so I'm happy that he finally. I remember getting uh, it. when because he is fighting a hell of injuries when he he first came yes. in. But there was, like, 20 games left in the season, and he put on, like, a show for them last 20. He was dying. Like, you seen, like, why they had. Is that the year Sarge was I think so. in the conversation for it and Brogdon won it? Is that the year you're talking about? It might be. Didn't play enough games. It might be because it was, like, if he played he enough played games. He played 31 games his rookie season. It was, like, if he played enough games, he would have had yeah, the, he he was had the It was that fake rookie season because he had set out the first two years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was a stretch where they had drafted in Erlers Noel. He set out. Ben Simmons set out. And B set out. I remember Markel I had him in, like, out. 2K. Some of us can have a rookie player. Sure. I remember I had him in two. <laughs> yeah. I think he's like a seventy something overall, but he was dogging he was a dog, as a rookie yeah. though. Man. Shout out to MB, man! Congrats, bro. I'm just ready to see these playoffs go crazy. I think that's the next thing. You get your award. Now we want to see you make the run. Yeah. Because out of all of the candidates, he's the only one that hasn't had the deep run. And I don't think he gets criticized like that. I think if he wins MVP and doesn't get a deep run this year, it's coming. I think it's coming, too, because it hasn't happened at all. Yeah. Like, not, like there's really not been conversation. I think What he's if had the, the deep run isn't because of him, but it's because of Harden? Don't matter. <laughs> there is no such, I don't, There is no deep run without uh, Joel Embiid. He needs to be MVP Embiid for even the idea of a deep run. Well, if a deep run, run happened and he is not on shit, James Harden is going to rob them for a no, billion no, no, dollars. I'm saying, I'm saying, like, what if the deep run doesn't happen and he's dominating, but it's like James Harden ain't on shit, so it's oh, just it won't matter. Like, it won't matter. When you're that guy, I'm, I, I get on my Shaq shit with that because nobody else that has get criticized – you telling me everybody who hasn't had a deep run is because of them? Mm, no, not right. always. Yeah, yeah. So it's like the point is you didn't. It, it didn't happen. Yeah, I haven't really seen a motherfucker who was averaging fifty playing perfect basketball and a team just holding them back. Yeah. <laughs> the only time that really has happened is when LeBron James led the Cavs in the finals and po- uh, both teams and points, rebounds, assists, steals, blocks, and, and they still lost. MVP. Yeah, he still almost won MVP. Um, yeah, no, I think that. Um, 
it would still be warranted. Because even right now, if you look at his stats as far as playoffs go, they look great. But then you watch the games, be like, oh, fourth quarter, he does, he hasn't done anything mm-hmm. yet. Um, and I think he's had the luxury of having certain excuses that have kind of been. I mean, every series w- he's going against the Celtics, something has happened. Warranted. Ben Simmons don't play in the bubble. Yeah. Um, what is the other one? Oh, Ben Simmons don't play in the bubble, and they also had like Al Horford on that. Do you remember Al Horford was a 76er? Yeah. But no, yeah. that first series, they just got their ass beat, didn't they? With young Jason Tatum. I'm gonna look it up. This is this is young. This is talking about in the bubble, right? No, no, no before, the, before the bubble. Before the this is when the Sixers had Bellinelli, Ersan Ilyasova. Um, this ain't Jimmy how Butler them went yet. Too well. This is this is this is Tatum and them. I'll tell you how it went though. They lost. Yeah, <laughs> young Tatum. This is uh, when twenty eighteen. No, no beard year. Tatum. No beard Tatum. He was wearing <laughs> Kyrie still. Yeah, th- this team also just looks. Bad on paper. Now that I'm looking at it again, the starting lineup was Ben, mm-hmm. uh, JJ, yeah, TJ McConnell started in this series. Okay, um, with Dario and then Joel, Joel Embiid, and off the bench, Marco Bellinelli, which yeah Bellinelli. might look a little bad, but he hit a game time shot for them. Yeah. Yeah. In this games. series specifically, he only shot thirty percent from three, but notoriously he's been really good. Robert Covington shot twenty five percent from the field this series. <laughs> Holy! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they got the ass kicked, yeah, they but they were kicked. projected to win. That's that they were supposed to beat that young. That was a young. That's Jason Tatum as a fucking rookie. Yeah, nineteen year old Tatum, who averaged twenty four points per game. That, oh that wow, he was very good. Them boys yeah. cooking. Uh, Aaron Baines started every game in the series too, and shot forty four percent from three. <laughs> he was fucking and beat up. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Aaron Baines. Man. Shout when he got Aaron that Baines. fan club page. There's nothing to really post about. Aaron Baines ain't playing. Yeah, he um, you know, no, he I went through that, that when he got it. I thought it stuff. happened when he went to the Suns. I remember it as the Suns profile yeah. picture. I don't know when it was created. Yeah, the, oh. I had a shirt and it was yeah, it's, it's Suns colors. You bogus here. Uh, yeah. That was a shirt. They sent it to me. Oh, it was a shirt. <laughs> Shout out to them though. All NBA. We or do we want to take a our quick break before we get to the all teams? Yeah, um, we want to give a big shout out. Can I get a round of applause all month long? We got our newest sponsor, So Rare. Shout out to our newest sponsor, So Rare. It's a global fantasy sporting game and marketplace. It's basically fantasy sports 2.0. Yes, sir. You can play it weekly in weekly competitions and win all kinds of prizes like NBA tickets and player cards. They've even created an official hoop heads league for all of y'all to play along. So make sure you check that out. And then today... We're going to do another draft. It's going to be 25 and younger. You had first pick. He had first pick. Today, KB got first pick. Who is Jason your first, Tatum, first pick overall under pick. 25? How old is Jason Tatum? 25. Tw- fuck. Is he 25? I think I just looked. If I he's, think 25, he's 25, it's 25. And 25 and under. Oh, 25 and under. Oh, okay, yeah, Tatum. Yeah, yeah, Jason Tatum. Um, my pick is Luca. He turned 25 mm. 30 days ago. Uh. So on me, so I'm gonna go. How did it get on you? Yeah, it's down this oh, way. Oh, I'm thinking we doing the teams. I'll go. Oh. I'll go Evan Mobley. I'll go Shea. You got back to back. Uh, Zion. Shea Zion. Mm. Derek is on you. Uh, give me. I be trying to remember that. We doing a podcast here. Let me no go. No dead air on through the wire. Yeah, come on, Derek. If you think, let me go. Paulo Bank here. Okay. That's a good pick. Paolo, I was, damn, I want a Paulo. Uh, so you took Paulo. I'm going to take Lamelo. No, I'm taking Anthony Edwards. Anthony Edwards. Ooh. Anthony Edwards. Are we allowing him to come to the podium? Say I want this guy. I know. Say, I, 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 I mispronounced his name, Anthony Edwards. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, who did you you said Lamelo at first? Is that what you said? Yeah. yeah. I'll take Lamelo then, um, and and then I want Patrick Williams. Uh, I'm taking Ja. Is Ja twenty? Wait, yeah. is it my pick? No, uh, no so damn. I'm taking Ja. Yeah. I feel like I ain't picked in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, I got. I just want to confirm that this guy is under. 25. Is he under age or over age? Let's see. Well, I want my my, my Jaren Jackson Jr. Is he twenty five? My shit tweaking. Yeah, no, you're right. He's under twenty five. <laughs> okay, <laughs> he over there. Jaren Jackson. <laughs> yeah, I the Wi Fi is kind of weak right now. I, ain't gonna <laughs> I got off of it. I got off of okay. it. Okay. So now it's on me. It's back to back on you. Uh, give me De'Aaron Fox. Mm. Also, give me. Y'all crazy for leaving this one dude on the board. I don't like how to say. Oh man, now you gonna make me think about it. No, just go who you was going with. 
Give me Walker Kessler. <laughs> Is it my turn now? Yep. Trey Young. Yeah, that's the guy I was talking about. I got, <laughs> I got, I I got, got too many guard guards. Already. Yeah, yeah I, got, I got two I got guards too many already. Guards. I'm still drafting them. Um, give me Jared Allen. I need a center. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm gonna take uh, uh Darius Garland, and uh, I'm also gonna take um. Don't do it, KB. I don't even remember who's on my team to know what position. Uh, give me Scotty Barnes as well. Okay. I don't know who's How on my team. How many players y'all have? That's, I think that's my last I think pick. I have four. That's my last pick. So it's going back down. Everybody's got four right now. I have Ja, Luca. I need to J- write down who they Jared are. Jared Allen. Who else did I have, y'all? Anthony Edwards. Yeah. Oh, okay. Ja, uh, ja Anthony Edwards, Luca, Jared Allen. My four is going to be a young man <laughs> who. <laughs> Nobody's drafting Bronny? He's under I was just gonna, my pick was gonna be Vic. Oh, <laughs> uh, it's gonna be a young man that coming out of the the G League. No, I'm gonna pick um Franz Wagner. Oh, you he just took my pick. I'm gonna go Keegan Murray. Take Vic, Mike. Take Vic. He's not an NBA. He can't take Vic. I didn't hear that it had to be in the NBA. No, I twenty five under twenty five. He, NBA. he could not, drive his little cousin if he wanted take to. Him in, and he gotta be in the NBA. He gotta be in the NBA. Okay. NBA affiliate. NBA. <laughs> Gabe York. Jabari Smith Carl Jr. Luke Jones, the MVP. <laughs> hey, he's three for three from three last night. Give me Jabari. All right. So, all NBA. All, all rookie. All rookie. Let's do all rookie. That's the that's the least fun one. First first team. I have Jay Ivey, Keegan Murray, Jalen Williams, Paolo, and Walker Kessler. I believe I have the same one. Wait, say it again. Ivy, Keegan, Jalen Williams, Paolo, and Walker Kessler. I didn't have Ivy. I didn't have Ivy on first team either. I got Benedict Mather. I had Benedict Mather. I kind of gave him the nod. Ivy's probably had the more complete season. Um, but that first half of Benedict Mather was kind of nasty. Yeah, he was <laughs> six, on Paolo. Six men in a year. Yeah. He was on Paolo. And yeah, and six men a year. My second team. He can't. Ant- he has not hit a three point shot in maybe two months, but <laughs> that first half was crazy. Andrew Nimhart, Jaden Ivy, Tari mm. Eason, Jabari Smith Jr. I, I hope one of y'all say Sohan because I he's on my I, he's on my I, second I take team. Jabari, um, and then Jalen Duran. Okay, okay, I don't hate it, I don't hate it. I don't have Nimhart. I have Nimhart. I have Nimhart on my second team. Uh, my second team is Ivy, Eason, Duran, Sohan, so so, and then Jabari Smith Jr. I have my second team was uh, Benedict Matherin, Nimbard, uh Sohan, Jabari Smith Jr. and Duran. I have Benedict Matherin, AJ Griffin. Jim, good, good, good ad, Derek. Good ad, Duran. That boy, he, he he went to work. <laughs> There's a lot of rookies that take can a dollar out the jar. <laughs> when when <laughs> motherfucker has some good shit, you like what well, I impressed. Take take a dollar out the jar. <laughs> uh, uh, Ricky, nobody cares about rookie teams. No, so I don't mind. That's why I don't mind leaving a person off. Yeah, thought about Dalen Terry. Oh, get the fuck out! Of here. I care about it a little bit. Beat your point guard, <laughs> Dalen Terry. Um, you see him last night. No, I did of not watch him last night. Of course you didn't. So you didn't see KB on the screen? No. Of course. I saw you tweet it. That was my Damn. glimpse of seeing it. So you didn't see Kobe White near triple double? Nope. He didn't even know what happened. He didn't know Kobe <laughs> White played. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, play. the, they played the Mavericks. Okay, okay. But I didn't care to watch that game. That shit came <laughs> they had close playoff too. implications. But Dallas was on. Yeah, they didn't yeah. want to play. Um, Luca only played because it was Slovenia. The first quarter, it was yeah. Slovenia Heritage Night. Then that's Theo why Pinson played. checked in. All NBA or all With defensive? The Let's go all defensive teams. All defensive, because I think there's a lot of candidates here that we can so fight about. This is what I want to say. <laughs> I had no idea. Draymond makes my thing if Dylan Brooks is a guard and not a forward. He is. Yeah, he's technically a guard. Well, I think he has oh, matter dual fact, citizenship. I lied. Well, no, yeah, if he has dual citizenship. He has dual citizenship. Oh, he he does. Um, I just made that up, but I he is listed as a guard. He's not on my shit because he's not a four. So I guess he wouldn't matter because I thought I thought of him as you a. You can forward. make revisions on the fly. Uh, I'm cool. I like Get my list. I don't want. I, I want to have my shit. I don't want Draymond on my shit because y'all got him. So I'm sticking to my guns. <laughs> okay. Uh, my first team is Drew Holiday. Wait, can we can we go like consensus? Yes or no? All right, consensus. Is Drew, Drew Holiday. Holiday on the first team. Drew Holiday is on my first team. Okay, great. Alex Caruso. Alex, yes. Let's go. Hey, I'll fight Alex this Caruso is on my Alex second team. Boo. My second team. Boo. 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 Who is on your first team? Don't say Marcus Smart. 
OG Ananobi. He's I respect it. He no, can, he can play a guard? <laughs> yeah, he's, he's guard. He's a guard. Oh, I didn't know that either. I didn't know he could yeah, play guard. I, I, I went into I like the percentage that he was hey, guard. I was on this. I, I had Dylan Brooks as a guard. I'm I'm replacing that motherfucker for OG. OG. I didn't know OG could play guard. Um, And then the, the, uh, these three should be consistent. I, well, I just want to say, I thought I was going to have to come onto this podcast and fight for Alex Caruso. I'm happy that he made it. Oh, no, no. no, I, no, I got no, my boy. No. Caruso, come on now. I got. I, I know I had to fight. I got a pool of players and how valuable they are defensively. And it's. He's Wait, is did you have him though, Derek, on your second team? Yeah. Okay. He made it. Um, technically. They on a technicality. Well, why, why would she make it? I'll, Caruso I'll, on a better defense. He's valuable to that defense. I just top I, three I, in deflections. OG, OG, you just OG. like OG. Yeah. Okay. Because uh, you've been advocating to trade for OG for a year and a half now. <laughs> he's gonna be super disappointed when he trade for him because ain't shit gonna really change. <laughs> um, Evan Mobley is on my first team. I have Evan Mobley as well. Not a consensus, but he's on the team. He's on the, he's I on my Draymond. second team. Okay. I have Evan Mobley, then I have Jaron Jackson Brook, which should be consensus. That's consensus. Yep. Yes. Second team. Mm-hmm. Okay. Derek White. Derek. Derek White, man. I ain't I know have, if he's gonna get love. You don't got today. Derek White, do you? I have Alex Truso. Yeah. Every anytime I looked at any time all defensive team, I just seen Derek White side to look into. I was like, yeah, yeah, I think he deserves he it. He does I think most people who go on reputation will have Marcus Smart over Derek White this year. I think Derek White is killing Marcus Smart this season defensively. The, mm-hmm. the numbers agree. So as I far I also as have valuable Derek White. to the Celtics mm-hmm. and just in, in general. This second one won't be consensus. I ran out of guards because Oof. y'all are talking about yeah, guards. Yeah. And this guy is on a team that has a six ranked defense and they needed some type of love and credit. So I put Herb Jones. Okay. I don't no, hate it. I don't you think no, I cannot I'm not be mad at Herb Jones either. He, I put he Dylan Brooks as made my, my honorable guard. mentions. Yeah, um, Evan Evan Mobley, uh, Herb Jones would have made my honorable mentions, but he did not make. It. And I'm not I'm not mad. I don't feel like anybody yeah. got snubbed if Herb is there. Uh, OG is next for me. OG is my second guard. Yep. So he 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 did make the list, but as a guard for me. Um, do it. Jaden McDaniels. Jaden McDaniels is my first. He is how Draymond forward, didn't yeah. make my team. Okay. Okay. Because the second team, it came down for me. And I know how valuable he is. Draymond is a is a more valuable defender. As far as how I ranked it, and that's shit I took in, 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 into consideration, but he's on a 19th, and I, they might be 18th now yep. defense. And I wanted to give Jaden McDaniel some love because the Timberwolves are a top 10 defense. I know he does play with Rudy and Draymond and have Wiggins and things like that, but I wanted to show some love to the guys that are on teams that have highly ranked defenses, um, and I who I think it. played a big part. Can, so. I, can I read you this um, website that Timberwolves fans put together? Yeah, is that for you could vote for him? Vote Jaden McDaniels yeah. for all defensive first team. Now, he didn't make the first team, but here it is. They got quotes from different players. Jamal Murray said, bro, you got to stop blocking my jumpers. He said that to Jaden McDaniels. That's one of my favorite traits of <laughs> Jaden McDaniels. He will block a That sounds like some shit Th- that this happened. Is re- to, uh, this is all real, though. It sounds made up. Uh, yeah, it Paul sound George like, said one of the guys like in the TV show. that are ultra talented, that isn't probably on everybody's radar, is Jaden McDaniels in Minnesota. Um, Chima o- o- I never know how to pronounce O-Kiki. her name. Chima No, no, no. China. Umake. Um, Umake. She does like t- TV. Oh, stuff. yeah. I know what you're talking about. Jaden McDaniels is Mr. Lockdown. Then they said, who had a bad night? And then it's their stats normally. And then their stats with, against Jaden McDaniels. LeBron James on this season, um, per 100 matchups, averages 32.1 points per game. I guess McDaniels, it was 19.4. Jason Tatum, normally 35.3. Against McDaniels is 23.7. Luca 40, 43.1. Against Jaden McDaniels is, is 23.5. Lillard, Halliburton, Kawhi, Paul George, Steph Curry, Donovan Mitchell, Jalen Brown. All of these dudes had ultra terrible games when being guarded. His goal by is McDaniels. to lock up the other team's best player. Yep. And when that's your defender's like motto or like that's his mindset, you're already putting, you're already starting off at a good spot. The last thing they got is why you should vote for McDaniels. He leads all wing players in block percentage. Matchup difficulty, 99th percentile compared to other defenders. Jalen spent the most time guarding the opposing player stars. Opposing players shoot 7% worse than expected at the rim when Jaden McDaniels is the closest defender. That's seventh in all of basketball. And that's normally a stat that's dominated by the centers of the league. And 2K ain't there had this boy with a badge. Not a badge. Now we don't got <laughs> off-ball pets. Um, they're shooting only 47% in isolations when Jaden McDaniels is the primary defender that's, that's well below the league average against anybody, against anybody else. The Wolves' defense is five points better when McDaniels is on the floor. And then the last stat they have here is Jaden has the second most 
career blocks of any player in his draft class. That's kind of cherry picked. But he's the only player in his draft class with 150 blocks and steals. And then they got a highlight package of him guarding LeBron mm-hmm. and so on and so forth. So and he he got that like remember listen to what I'm saying for he got that KD kind of type of feel too where he's he's labeled as six nine, but he looked like he's six ten, six eleven on the court. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I'm I'm happy he's making at least some of our teams here. My center, I feel bad because I can't give this other dude with the nod. My center is Anthony Davis, but Nicholas Claxton deserves some love. So I hope some of y'all got Nicholas Claxton. I respect it. I put Draymond Green here. At a center? He, he, I, I'm pretty sure he can go with center this he year. He can. Okay. I'm pretty <laughs> sure he could. And and I'm still giving my shit to Anthony you, Davis. If I were to, if you would have reminded me of that, I probably would have the center and that would allow me to get another wing in there. Um, I want Bam Adebayo as my center. I, the the Miami, he's still a great defense and he is in the upper. What's your pre- definition of great? They're still a really good defense with okay. Bama's on the floor. How about okay. that one? They're really good defense with Bama's on the floor. Um, and I still think that his switchability and stuff is is uh, one of the most valuable things in all of basketball. Uh, but I, I don't hate Anthony Davis because it, it was between him and AD, um, and I went with Bama. For me, it was really Draymond or AD, and I went with Green. Why? <sighs> Why? It really wasn't a true – I just – my gut just told me to go with Green. Okay. There was no reason. Mm-hmm. I think they both have legit you arguments. You with your gut. You got a lot to trust yeah. over there. I went. I uh, do. I'm just fucking with Jaden <laughs> Dre and Anthony Davis, but Nicholas Claxton. I, I wanted to put him there so bad. Yeah. He, I think he was right behind. Who was it? Uh, I think he was second in total blocks just throughout the season. And his versatility was. I think it was just uh, amazing. And I think a lot Blame of blame Kyrie kinda, and Katie got put on this. No, year. if they, legitimately if they would have stayed, he would be here. But because they would they, be a significantly better team. Not even just that, but at, right after the trade, his minutes went down a little bit because he was. Significantly less valuable on offense without KD and yeah. Kyrie, <laughs> so he started to lose minutes. I mean, it's back up right now, um, but he did lose a little bit of minutes um, right after the trade and stuff. That he was trying to figure some things out. So, um, same like motto, that. different category. All NBA first team. I'm gonna say the name. Y'all tell me if it's all right. So I want to ask, how much do y'all consider? Because this year's like no other. We feel like everybody played 54 games. Right, yeah. Kevin Durant did not make my list because he did not Durant play 50 games. Mine. Exactly. KD so I did it. have a, like a mental cap. Like, like Book did not make and my I list even thought when he no. normally would if he played this the How amount of games. 53. I'll take 53. And and Same no, with Brown. You know I'll take 53. But for KD to not at least play at least 50, I couldn't do it. I was yeah. thinking about that 65% shit too. Mm-hmm. And it's just like for the people 65 that... 65 total. Yeah, six five uh, games, not sixty five percent. Oh no, no, I, yeah, I was just looking at some of the other players that kind of made it or like were in the Kennedy, and they only had like fifty seven, fifty eight too. Yeah, and I'm like, I could give, I could give or take those like three or four games that people might have missed, especially because this is the last year that it's possible, right? If that makes sense. We're like next year, we we can't even have a conversation because it's not gonna work. Mm-hmm. I love KD's joke that he had on Twitter. It ain't gonna count because yeah, it ain't gonna count because yeah. it. I'm <laughs> uh, Luca is on my first team. Luca did, did not make my I first team. I did not have team. my He's first team. My first team. Steph made my first team. I did not, not make Steph my first team. Not my first team. Tatum made my first team. Tatum yep, did, did make the first team. Giannis made my first team. Yep. Yes, sir. And then B made my first team. Yes. I think that I weighted the lack of games a little bit on Curry. Um, He still made my team, but not the first team. Yep. And Luca not making the playoffs at all really hurt his candidacy as far as first team goes. I, my, my first so team. So who made the first team? Shea. And Donovan Mitchell That's are my first team guards. Who made yours? Damian Lillard? Yep, Dame and Tatum. I was hoping you said Dame. because Dame and Tatum? Well, I thought it's not positionless, right? So I could just No, that's it. not until like 2024. No, literally, yeah, next year. <laughs> oh, so. Right. Yeah. 2024 is next year. <laughs> so I'll just switch to Dame and Shea. No, it'll be that. the 2023 season. It starts in October. So it'll be 2023-2024. Right. Okay. Yeah, so then I'll just move. I'll put Shea in there. Move. So you came in positionless? Yeah. Okay. Um, second team. Yep, Damian Lillard, Shea, LeBron, Randall, Jokic, Randall as in Julius, motherfuckers. The the one that's getting a Wait, one point. Say that again. Damian Lillard, mm-hmm. Shea, LeBron, Julius, okay, Randall, okay. Jokic. I made sure you had LeBron in there. Uh, Sabonis <laughs> was on my second team. Sabonis is on my third team. Over Jokic? No, Jokic was on my first team. But Embiid was your MVP. Yeah. How does that How? work? I'm, oh, because he did position. Did you have Embiid? Yeah, but who was a forward? You had Embiid and Jokic. I bet Embiid, Jokic, and Giannis. How was Embiid, Jokic? Where Jokic is a center? That was my first thing. Jokic I, is a center. Yeah, but I thought I came in positionless. He did. Positionless. So you should take some time yeah. and make it 
positions. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Take that list off, motherfucker. Um, my second team were Curry, Doncic, Butler, James, Jokic. I had uh, Luka Doncic, Steph Curry, LeBron, Julius Randle, and Jokic. I like the Julius Randle pick, bro. Julius Randle was just hey, on you, one. You bro. know what would have made Julius Randle for sure, for sure, make my list? And if I guess he, it's not an account of his own. He didn't get hurt. If he didn't get hurt, because he would have been one of the few people in basketball to play every single game this season, and that matters, especially when you play for Tibbs. <laughs> especially when you play for Tibbs. Um, so my third team, while we here, and I, I don't know if y'all got. Is John Moran an All-NBA to y'all? No. No. Okay. Mm -hmm. I thought I was going to be the only one to not have him. Do you have him? No. Nope. Okay. So my third team is Lillard, yep. okay. Holiday, Brown, Jaron Jackson Jr., Sabonis. I didn't have Jaron Jackson. I feel like an idiot. Yeah. No, no, no. You shouldn't because I don't even know if he's getting a ton of All-NBA buzz. I didn't have Jaron Jackson. He meant a lot to the Grizzlies, He though. definitely did. I had, uh, go ahead. I had uh, Damian Lillard, De'Aaron Fox. Yep. Jalen Brown, Laurie Markin, and Sabonis. My three, uh, yeah, I had Brown, Laurie, Sabonis. My difference is I had Donovan Mitchell and Devin Booker. Mm -hmm. Somebody, I, somebody. Devin Booker it. was hard. Yeah, somebody he didn't make it, but it was hard for me not to, especially because he missed that one month, and I felt like the Suns just they Sucks. fell off. They yeah. bro, they suck so bad. And even once they brought in Kevin Durant, the man was still, <laughs> man was still getting thirty. Like it, it was very nothing. Clay Thompson esque when Clay Th when Clay Thompson and them added KD. They yeah. asked him about like his shot attempts going down. He said, "Who shot attempts going down?" And he continued to take the same <laughs> amount of shots. That's how the Booker thing looked. Um, for the last spot between Jaron Jackson Jr., there's this one dude who didn't play enough games in my mind, but I almost put him there because he's been. It, it was Kawhi. He yes. was, he's been yeah, so fucking good that I was like, he might have only played 50 games this season. But 42 out of those 50, he's been one of the best players in basketball. So it's yeah. like, do I? how do I wait this? And I think this year is going to be different. I mean, uh, Draymond Green had a comment about, like, the amount of games required next season. It's like, everybody's happy until they got to put bums and they all NBA team. <laughs> and if, like, again, if we looked at this season as with the same criteria a as next season, majority of these dudes don't make it. LeBron, yeah. LeBron don't make it. Um, Booker. Booker don't make it. Steph Kirby Curry. don't make it. Uh, Lillard don't make it. Morant don't make it. If you had him there, um, it's just so so many people yeah. just don't make the team or aren't even in conversations because a lot of those dudes aren't even close to sixty five. Mm -hmm. It's no. like we got fifty five like games. Ten game, there's literally like a ten game gap between a lot yeah. of those guys. And um, and maybe it won't be that way next season because you're gonna see less resting because people want to make it and stuff. Um, but if we put that same criteria now where it was positionless. They're they going to have to make it minutes. We're going to see a lot of yeah, guys. Yeah, a lot of guys going to come in and play a few minutes. Check and in down. and mm -hmm. sit down. Yeah. So, yeah. Like, we, I could definitely see a few games where LeBron check in and then don't play the rest of the game. Do you think they game. ever go to, like, to just total in general, though? I seen, and this is really, like, out of there, but I think it was, who was it? I think it was Jeff Van Gundy talking about it on the, on the uh, on TV, but he's like for the the scoring leader because it's Joel Embiid. But he's like Jason Tatum has the most points because obviously the extra games and everything. Mm -hmm. So I think it could be kind of cool. I hope but not. I like Purr. Purr. Purr is cool. Um, but then you get the Jaron Jackson thing too. We're like Purr, mm -hmm. Jaron Jackson played enough games, but he's got less minutes played than some of the people that got way less games played. Right. Um, but I just want to say, if if the rules were th together this year. There's no Dame. There's no Giannis. I don't know if we realize that. But Giannis missed about two games, so he'll probably be able to go to the league and say, yeah, I missed these extra two games. Um, nobody had Kyrie, but, like, he wouldn't be in conversations. Job wouldn't be in conversations. Um, Paul George, who nobody even mentioned, was surprised. I think he has an underrated case. But I think because he's injured now, it kind of hurts a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, no, Jimmy Butler wouldn't even make it. And so on and so forth. So, so the all NBA team would look like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Even though the Harden wouldn't be in conversation, I was seeing the players been would have been left off the rookie shit too. It'd have been harder for the rookies too. Mm. If the, the I mean, that, they might not they even be able play. to field a full team with six five games of rookies because a lot of rookies don't in and out of the rotation. AJ right. Griffin deserved to be in the get yeah. some love, but he wouldn't make because he didn't play six five games. Mm -hmm. That's one of the awards where games. Should I don't matter. think it's gonna matter as far as all NBA. Yeah, uh, yeah. all I'm sorry, all rookie. Um, no, yeah, you can't do that for all rookie because then you're gonna have guys in there that don't really play. Yeah, so I don't know. It's gonna be real weird. But that that's that's the through, through the wire war show. Is there is there? Oh. What was the hardest decision to make? Well, like what part of the list was the hardest to y'all? Was it all NBA? 
in all defensive? It was I would all say NBA, yeah, all defensive. Yeah, yeah all NBA, all, all NBA for sure. Did you make your adjustments, D Mills? A little bit, yeah. <laughs> so he was for the show. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> he was a normal <laughs> spectator. <laughs> all you gotta do is this. Just who's your top around. three centers? Jokic, Giannis, and Embiid. Not Giannis. And what in the order though? The bonus also was on there. Which Jokic, your top? Which the your, bonus and Embiid. He ain't listening in to your nothing order. you saying. In, your, in the order, <laughs> Embiid. <laughs> <laughs> Jokic and Sabonis. Okay. Boom. Okay. That's your first, second, and third team. Centers. Who is your top two forwards? Because you got a pool of players you should be yeah. looking at. Who's your top two forwards? Tatum and Giannis. Giannis. They're both on first team. Second team. Who's your second group of forwards? So, well, let me take off Sabonis then. So I have Sabonis on here. <laughs> Lowry, Lowry Marketing. Uh huh. And um, Randall. When <laughs> it's good. Yeah, yeah, it's good. It's fucking I'm your brain. It's good. Brain. <laughs> it's good. So do you have a bunch of guards? Like, what that, what position? That second do you have the team most? did have three guards. Give, okay, give me. What your made po- you go positionless? Give me your positionless though. Okay, so the positionless team was Dame, Tatum, and B. You don't have any problem Yoke with Dame Giannis. being on a bottom team? The motherfucker's a thirteen seed. Or not, ain't he like the thirteen seed? Yes. No. Is it not? Hell yeah. No. Okay. Second team was Donovan. Have has there ever been a 13 seed player to make an all NBA first team? If you had I to guess. I highly doubt it. I, I highly doubt it as well. But Dame is your boy, so keep keep going. <laughs> hey man, he was the only motherfucker keeping them boys afloat. When it comes to Dame, <laughs> take logic and throw that bitch so far. <laughs> <laughs> take your logic and throw that bitch so I know far they out the window. To the 12, he was giving us some leans. <laughs> <laughs> and then the second team would have been Donovan, Luca, Shea. Um, Sabonis and then Laurie Marketing. Mm. Third team would have been Steph, Fox, Brown, Jimmy, and Julius Randle. Them stanky ass teams. <laughs> Lowry makes it over Steph Curry if it's positionless. <laughs> oh, true. Yeah, yeah, no. and he makes it over LeBron. I didn't go with LeBron just because it felt like he just missed so much time. How many I games just, did Larry Marketing play? If you had to guess, sixty, sixty. I want 62 games. 66. He makes 66. the cut. Yeah. He makes the cut. Shout out to Larry Marketing. And shout out to him. He's going to do his time. Yeah. Yeah, you got to go to the military. He better than me. I tell you that much. <laughs> if, if the America had that rule, I don't know what the hell would happen. Yeah. <laughs> All you're doing is training. You ain't really going. Unless something pop off, just like in Futurama. <laughs> When they signed up for the military and 30 seconds later, a yeah, war they started. Signed, they signed up for the military just to get like a 5% discount on gum, which is already cheap as hell. <laughs> I couldn't imagine being forced to go do something I don't want to do. Yeah, but I mean, in their defense, it's been that way forever. So like yeah. everybody grows up with the idea that you're going to have to spend one year there. Um, and it's not uncommon. A lot of countries have You have to spend the whole year there? or does it I, don't, just... I don't know the specifics, um, but it's not, it's not uncommon at all. Um, hmm. Finland's not the only place that does that. I had to look up how many games Steph Curry played, too. He played two more than LeBron, by the way. Yeah. LeBron is hella time this year. <laughs> and I damn don't want to put him on third team for instead of second team. <laughs> I, th- who had a better season, LeBron or Anthony Davis? Anthony, Anthony Davis. Davis. Yeah. Anthony yeah. Davis. He's back rebounding, yeah. too? If Come Anthony on now. Davis was considered a forward, he would 100% make it on my list. But because he was a, a center and I wanted to give Sabonis the nod, mm-hmm. Then he didn't make it. Got to get some bonus that not. Yeah. Yeah. Third best center. He nodding back too. Honorary card. You said he what? Nothing. I didn't even hear it. It's fine. You don't need to. <laughs> um, it's been a good year though. I'm happy it's over. I'm so happy. I'm so ready over. for the playoffs. I'm so yeah, ready for too. the playoffs. The play is gonna be so exciting. They so keep fun. saying that these last games matter, and all nobody's no, playing anybody. Nobody, yes, I, all I be doing is like I'll, I'll check, in the game, uh, check into the game if it's a look close, but I just be looking at the damn box scores and looking who's playing, and I'm like, hey, it's not even bro, worth it. Danny y'all? Green led the, led the the Cavs in scoring the other night. The Danny Lakers last night were struggling with a Suns team that didn't have none of their starters. <laughs> yeah, y'all were literally bro, fighting tooth and nail late in the game. Y'all lost Your that team game. was struggling too. Uh oh. Which team? Say it, say it. Which team? <laughs> the Bulls. The Bulls was chuckling yeah, yesterday. No well, but in our defense, we didn't play any of our All-Stars. Boots That's played true. a first half. That's true. I mean, we suck. So It came down to the last trash, shot. But, um, 
But he, you didn't watch, so you didn't see Kobe White almost put up a triple double no. and Patrick Williams take over a whole quarter. You didn't, you didn't care about that. No. And then Stacey King telling him, this that's gonna be his year next year. He's gonna be doing that next year. I, 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 I agree. I agree, <laughs> Stacey, because Demar's gonna be gone. And Vooch. You know, they opened up 20, 20 hey, shots I, right I there. I saw Vooch and Luca dap up and talk for a long time. Same they gonna have that cap space. Same with Zach. <laughs> oh well. I can't I can't talk about the Zach. You see the watch that Luca had on? No. Nah. He had a, you um, put it in the chat. Did look you? in the Twitter chat. He had a um. He said AP. AP. He had an AP on. How much you think that Royal was? Oak? Oh, definitely 40, 40 hey. Luca Luca got NBA money, 000. max contract money, and Jordan Brand money. So he, that ain't nothing to him. Yeah, th- th- <laughs> this is the <laughs> he watch that, that people, motherfucker on the floor when he get home. <laughs> yeah. People think that this watch is that watch because it has the same like mm-hmm. build. It's yeah. got the same. I build. was like, bro, no, this is not a fucking AP. Are you? Are you? Are you? Are you dumb? I think the last. Are you dumb or you stupid? I think the last day of the season is going to matter a ton, though. Like today's slate of games, could not care less. The Timberwolves are going to get dispersed. They should win, but like we could genuinely see people jockeying for position, because there is only a half game difference between a lot of different teams. Where the Suns have locked up number four, and now we try to figure out who's bold enough to be wanting to go against the Suns in the playoff series. Should Mm -hmm. they be scared? Probably. They're undefeated, but again, if you look at the eight games they played, it was against bad teams. Objectively, they ain't played against nobody great yet. Um, but I would still be scared as hell. But being scared as hell can fuck around and put you in the play in. So maybe you shouldn't <laughs> be scared as hell. Um, in the next podcast, we'd be able to talk about all of that. Um, we might see because if I look at this last game of the day of the season, first of all, we got ball from t- noon until like 5 p.m. Mm-hmm. You wake up, you got ball. But like the first game is Bulls versus Pistons. Kobe White, go have a game. You know, like nobody cares about that game. We got Hawks versus Celtics on national TV. That game has no playoff significance at all, other than the fact that the Atlanta Hawks – nope, never mind. Other than the – there's no playoff implications. The next game, no playoff implications. The only game that has playoff implications from the jump is – oh, actually, all seven games that start at 12 mean nothing. They mean nothing, and nobody's going to be playing. Then we get to 230, and this starts to matter a little bit. The Pelicans play against the Timberwolves. That's a huge game for playoff seeding. Uh, this today? No, uh, Sunday. Sunday. And then the other game, Utah Jazz versus Lakers. It matters. And ain't it funny Lakers. how people change like each uh, Sunday? Bro. You know, church fit. If we don't take care of the damn Jazz on Sunday <laughs> like that? we should. I, have no idea. I mean, y'all went to overtime. And with ain't them it funny days. how people change yeah. like Easter Sunday? Going against freaking THT. Yeah. Who said that, Mike? Who? And ain't it funny how people change like Easter Sunday? You know, church fit then out. No, nah, I don't know, but that's a funny saying. Oh, man. Why does that sound like Outcast? No, Andre 3000. You remember when you didn't know that Outcast was two people? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm putting my shoes on. Y'all can wrap this shit up. And I'm, I'm glad that you fixed it yourself. Lil Wayne, right Lil, Lil Wayne, Lil Wayne. Um, Clippers own the destiny, though. The last thing I'm going to say before we either stop or go on to the next one. Um, the Clippers... Go against the Suns, who will not play anybody. There's no reason to play anybody. Mm-hmm. They win that game. They can secure the five spot if they win that game. If they don't, a lot of things could change around them that could put them in the play-in or put them at six, which it seems like what a lot of people want to be. Mm-hmm. And uh, will we see some people sending some things out to honestly lose, even if that loss means that you might fall into the play-in? Do y'all expect that? No. Because no one wants to go into that one-game elimination. Mm-hmm. You want to avoid that at all costs. You can go in there and just shit the bed. Shots not falling. The ball's not going in, and you just lose. Right. Now you got to really go into the another game. Because we saw in a few years, yeah. the Warriors missed it while being a 7-8 seed, and then the Clippers were also the 7-8 seed last year and mm-hmm. missed it completely. They lost two games. So it's a bad place to be. I mean, I guess, yeah. The, the implications, I think, on uh, – the Lakers still have to come out and play, unfortunately. Yeah. I mean, it sucks, though, too, because Golden State Warriors and Clippers, they basically, like I said, Sun's not probably going to be playing nobody, and then Golden State is going against the Blazers. So it's going to be hard to see them lose the game. And the Kings sat people yesterday against the Warriors, which I was telling KB, if the Warriors would have won that game, or no, if they lose that game to the Kings, then the war, then the, the Lakers would have hopped up, and the Kings would have been going against the, the Lakers. So I feel like... That's part of the reason they just like you know we don't we don't really need that game, so it's gonna be it's gonna be crazy though. You know, honestly, I don't thing? think no matter who you go against, it's not gonna be easy at all, which I like about this playoffs. 
at least in the Western Conference. Out yeah. east. Oh, you can out walk east. to the first round. First three, four, first three seeds got that shit wrapped up. At least they should. Yeah. And if they don't, then somebody is getting fired. We still um, got that bet for the Nets. Yes, that I say that they will take one game. Against anybody. Isn't that a cra- – like, am I bugging to think that the Nets can take one game from Philly in a series? No, I don't think so. One Philly, game? Philly. Mikhail Bridges have 41 game and just somehow they – Philly like to let a motherfucker get one game. Take one game. And how much money is it? A White Sox ticket. Oh, it was. So, it like, was. One, like 150-ish to – okay. He want the nice ones, though. And he want the food included. Would you say that our game was – oh, hell uh, no. I ain't making that bad with that. The food included was good. Nacho, I saw him go to yeah, the movie a couple times. I say, yeah. And you got to get to split the pot, too. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when is our next White Sox game? Derek I, was trying to get to Wrigley. Oh, yeah. I was in the oh, yeah, talking that? to KB why, about it. Why, why we be acting like, and I'm I'm talking humbly, okay, but why we act like we got a way to do shit? Why, <laughs> why, why we couldn't go to a White Sox game in back-to-back weeks if we wanted to? Who, no, who, we can't. who, who really couldn't do that up here? I mean, I we're not buying BMWs every, every fucking week and <laughs> Rolex shopping. I'm we talking, should, it's, it's a baseball We should. It's a baseball game. What was it, $100? Yeah, I, we should go to Wrigley. Wrigley got some good games coming up. They got the Padres to, coming to town. I need to go, like, again um, in a week. I'm down, bro. Yeah, I'm, I'm with Wrigley. this conversation. Wrigley, I'm, I'm, I'm hooked I'm, on I'm, baseball games. I would love games. an Uber to Wrigley. I would love an Uber yeah, to Yeah, that's an Uber. Like, we Wrigley. had our first trial. Shit was a little com- Okay, let's Uber. Let's go there early. Come right. on. One thing about Wrigley, though, it's going to always be packed. Always. Oh. It's around, I know. Uh, I've seen somebody, like, story, and they was at Wrigley. They shit was... Niggas go to Wrigley. They ain't even trying to watch Shit looking like a damn Super Bowl. Yeah. Social aspect. And, and you're going to get better the more you go. Like, now we know Uber. Like, sure. You know, it'd be different things like that. That yeah. was also open and day. Open and day. Yeah. The next right. time we go to a game, it's it not going to be, be nearly as many people. Right. Yeah. You literally had, like... What, how, how much plug, does that arena hold? Like 50,000, 60,000? it's like 36,000. Oh, Where we parked wasn't that far away the whole time. It was, it was perfect. Yeah. It, but we, it ain't gonna it ain't gonna be like that again. Okay. No game I had ever been to in my life was like that. Dude. Really? If I, if I've never spit in I have been to one game. For that bad that bathroom line was no, I'm crazy. No, talking about to get in the game. We had a No, line. that was line was, that was crazy. Game we went to we walked oh. up and went in. Yeah. Yeah. No. So it, my shoes was messed up before I even got in the stadium. The only game that was ever like that was the Warriors ring night. I didn't go to that one. I was. That's why yeah. that shit. Look, you yeah, remember yeah. how D Mills had a he had to download the app or whatever, and I was waiting for him as, at first, <laughs> but I seen all everybody start coming through. And I'm like, D Mills, I'm gonna have to get go get, <laughs> get, get some of if, them nachos. If, if we was there early, I would have waited. But the fact that it was already second inning, the White yeah. Sox was already losing because yeah. they were bum ass pitching. Yeah, <laughs> I, I had to get. It was raining. I had to get in there. I I, to, this is the, it, these are the next home series for the Cubs if we want to go to Wrigley. Um, this Monday to Wednesday, they play against the Mariners. I would love to go. Y'all know I love J-Rod. Um, I, w- I would like that as well. They got the Dodgers coming to town on 420. What Ooh. are those times for the Mariners? The Mariners games, Monday is a, is a uh, Monday and Tuesday are night games, and Wednesday is a uh, 1 o'clock start. That Wednesday won't be great. And I think the weather's supposed to be nice as fuck. Yeah, the 70s. Yeah, it's like supposed 70, to be 80, 70s, 70s, yeah. yeah. Like, Ooh. That Wednesday won't be nice. Day game, 77. We leave at 10. We go 11. They got another series against the Dodgers. Almost all day games. Then the Padres come to town. And then Miami comes together, comes in uh, early next month. I would love that Mariners one. Never seen J Rock. We were supposed to see J Rock. Oh, we did no. see J Rock. We, 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 we did see J Rock. We did see J Rock. We did see J Rock in Texas. I was supposed to say in Dallas. Yep. Yeah. Oh, that's what's up. Yeah. I'm not picking on the teams they going against because I don't really know. I would love to go uh if we did Mariners when we for the for the tour. You said for the for the Mariners? Mm-hmm. I don't know. I mean we could just go again. What's our stops? What's our stops again? Las Ve- oh Miami, Las Vegas, and Toronto. There's one more. Philly. 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 We should plan our tour around a baseball game. <laughs> Make sure the Phillies are in town. I want to go see. You should see the Phillies for sure. Go see Trey Turner. Go see Ain't going to be no Bryce Harper. See, is Nick still there? <laughs> yeah, Nick Cassianos. Mm-hmm. Oh, Nick's yeah. That's now. my boy. I'm like, who the fuck is Nick? Yeah, Nick, and Come Schwarber. on now, Nick. Uh, <laughs> Nick, like you know, only Nick and the you know, Nick Gordon. Too. They probably gonna hit a home run. We just ain't gonna be able to hear them announcers. Yeah, look, look at Mike with a little bit of baseball lore. You know, a little bit of the memes is going on. There's been a tragedy. Hold on, wait. Cassian is going deep. <laughs> oh, it's <Back>. out of here. <laughs> oh, yeah, but we definitely should because. I think we the thing we do is try to make sure everybody can have, can go, but it can be the motherfuckers in this room right now. Yeah, and just Terrence go to is always gonna be down. Though. Terrence is always gonna be down, especially Mason's if he comes to a Cub game. He will come to a Cub game unless First, he might not be able to go to the day game because he yeah, also has a work. real job. Oh, 
So we had to play. Day games are better than night games. Mother be forgetting that people got real jobs because our job is this. Day games is better to me than night games. One hundred percent. You still got your full day ahead. The game yeah. end at four thirty. You back at the crib by five. But when it end, we going into rush hour traffic. Yeah, yeah that's also true. Yeah. yeah, that's also true. But it's gonna be rush hour like, regardless because we all departing a fucking crowded ball game. Yeah, I guess. it's like a thirty thousand people all leaving the same spot at the same time. Yeah, we'll figure it out. That's a wrap though, y'all. Another episode of Through the Wire. Hope y'all enjoy it. Awards. We in playoff mode. We will see y'all Tuesday. We out. Peace. Peace.